The shaded part in the number line above puts x somewhere between negative 5 and positive 3, and they're asking which of the algebraic expressions in the answer choices describes that range. Now the answer choices all contain inequalities with absolute values, and as I explain in my book, an inequality with an absolute value can go one of two ways. It's either describing a house arrest, if the absolute value is less than some constant, or a straining order, if the absolute value is greater than some constant. Now looking at the shaded region here, it should be a house arrest, so we should have an absolute value that's less than something, but all five answer choices have an absolute value that's less than something, so that's not really helpful here. What is helpful, though, is noticing that the total range is 8 units, going from negative 5 to positive 3, and that means that the constant in the correct answer should be half of that, 4. So we'd have 4 on either side of 0 in the house arrest kind of scenario. So because the total range of the shaded part is 8, we can eliminate answer choices A, B, and C. Another way to eliminate answer choices is to notice that the center of the shaded part isn't zero, so that eliminates answer choices A and B. We've got an absolute value that's a bit offset. And you can also eliminate C based on that because the shaded part is offset by one, right? If we shift that shaded part one unit to the right, then you'll have it centered around zero. So which of these answer choices is effectively shifting the shaded part one unit to the right. It looks like that's answer choice E, it fits the bill. You've got x plus one, so it's shifting it one unit to the right, and it's less than or equal to four, which is exactly what we wanted. Now another good way to reason through this question is through the absolute value of a difference. I explain in my book that the absolute value of an unknown can be thought of as the absolute value of that unknown minus zero. So for example, the absolute value of A is the same thing as the absolute value of A minus zero, and it's just describing how far from zero A is. Now if you had any other difference in an absolute value, for example, the absolute value of X minus Y, that's just describing how far from Y X is. Using that understanding and going back to answer choice E, we could think of that as the absolute value of X minus negative one, because X plus one is the same as x minus negative one. And if you think of it that way, it's telling you that x is located up to four units away from negative one, which is an exact match to the shaded part. x is located up to four units away from negative one. So if we think of answer choice E as the absolute value of x minus negative one is less than or equal to four, which would be translated into x is located up to four units away from negative one, then we can easily see that that works as well. So I think those are the two good ways to reason through this question. I know a lot of people will just solve it by plugging in a bunch of numbers. My only worry is that then you're not really learning anything from the question, and then your GMAT score wouldn't increase. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.